A Macintosh trade show is unlike any other computer conference. In fact, it's more like a love fest than a trade show with adoring Mac users eager to gobble up the latest Macintosh products and applications. And then, of course, there is the Mac head view of the world. Like, why do all those other people waste their time on Windows? Today, we'll show you why no one in Boston cares about Chicago on this special Macworld edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, Personal Computer Division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and here with me in Boston at Macworld Expo is Tim Baharin, Hi. President of Creative Strategies. Tim, when we were at Macworld in San Francisco at the beginning of this year, you said when we get to Boston, it won't be Macworld anymore, it'll be the Power Mac show. Is that what's happened? Is this Macworld all about Power Macintosh? Yeah, the Power Mac is really the focus of this show. Apple needs a lot of momentum if they want this to succeed. And they, even though they've sold about 230,000 units so far, they really need some people to take a look at it, play with it, and really get a chance to make it succeed. So what they're doing is they're focusing the show on it, and they're bringing in all of the new software. So Microsoft, for example, has introduced Word 6.0 and their Excel product for the Power PC, which will give them a big boost. And then they've got hands-on demonstrations so people can come in and say, hey, this is what the Power PC is all about. Let's look at it. All right, what's the status of Newton at this Macworld? Yeah, it's funny because, you know, last year at this show, Newton was the big thing at this show. And now that it's a year later, Apple has had, you know, its problems with it, not accepted as well as they like. But at the same time, they're very proud of it. They want Newton to, be, to succeed. So they've made some of the focus on Newton, showing all of the new software. And there's a lot of activity of people coming by and trying Newton for the first time. So, yeah, it's still a very important focus for Apple. All right, let's go inside Macworld Expo and cruise the aisles for you in search of the newest and neatest Macintosh goodies. Over 50,000 people crowded the aisles at Boston's World Trade Center to see the latest products for the Mac. This year's show was so big that the smaller companies had to exhibit at a second location, the Bayside Expo Center. And Apple set up its own pavilion across the street from the World Trade Center where visitors lined up to see the new Power Mac. Some analysts are saying the whole future of Apple Computer is riding on the success of the Power Macintosh. So how is Power Mac doing? According to Apple, there are now more than 200 native applications for the Power Mac. And Apple says that in the retail channel, Power Mac is outselling the Pentium PC. The end of 1995, most of the Macintoshes sold by Apple will have a Power, power PC chip inside. So the, the, the direction of the company is to power Macintosh, and that's where the install base is, that's where the growth is. That's compelling for a developer. The Power Mac, I think, is the most brilliant thing Apple's done. What they've managed to do here is leapfrog the Intel uh, alliance, the Intel consortium, the Intel whatever you want to call them, the evil empire. But um, it, it looks like with one, one uh, strategic maneuver, they've leapfrogged over Intel, it looks like the Pentium chip is the end of the line. I don't know that they can pipe, they can get any more performance out of a CISC chip. And for Apple to make the commitment to risk and to do it so well, I, I think it bodes well for them. The big question on the Power Macintosh is, will there be strong support from the software companies so that users can really take advantage of the chip? They've already got about 200 applications that will be designed specifically for the Power Mac. And at this particular show, Microsoft has endorsed it by introducing Microsoft Office for the Power Mac. And that'll go a long way to getting other developers on track. But at this point, having, by, having at the end of the year 200 applications is a real good move for them, considering the Power Mac's only been out for four or five months. People are really excited about the Power Macintosh. Uh, we are as well about the speed difference and the enhancements that people can get from using that. You can see speed enhancements for the Power Macintosh as, as we have optimized it for that platform. But as far as features and functionality, we really do like to keep that compatible, whether you're using a 68K Mac, a Power Mac, or a Windows compatible machine. WordPerfect used Macworld to show off its new Power Mac word processor. This is version 3.1 of WordPerfect, running under the new Mac operating system, 7.5. Clara says their new Clara's Draw, an upgrade to Mac Draw, is the first new program to ship as both a native application for the Power Mac 
and a standard version for the 68K Mac, all in one package. A smart installer automatically loads the correct version for your computer. Running Clara's Draw in native mode for Power Mac boosts performance by up to six times in text handling, screen redraws, and graphic resizing. But while the Power Mac processor can speed things up a lot, there are some roadblocks in the existing Mac architecture that can slow things down. They're well optimized for graphics applications, and Apple's, that's Apple's stronghold, is um, press, you know, pre-press and publishing and stuff like that. Um, on the negative side, Apple still has Nubus and still has SCSI, um, and that slows down data throughput and things like that. They are going to go to PCI standard, and the PCI standard will enable better throughput. But that's a good six to you know, 12 months away in terms of implementing it into the system. So um, that, that's a little bit of a downfall on it. And, they, and Apple's going to have to continue to get more aggressive about pricing. And Apple has done just that, cutting prices on the Power Mac and beefing up the configuration options. On the software side, it's not only the biggies like Microsoft and Novell that are moving to take advantage of the Power Mac's speed. Route 66 Geographic Information Systems demonstrated their route planning software on the Power Mac, and Logo Vista introduced English to Japanese translation software for the Power Mac. The company says the native version of the program translates documents two to four times faster than on a 68K Mac. While the Power Mac is providing a lot of juice for serious applications like CAD and image processing, one sleeper application area that may drive Power Mac software support is games. It's the kind of kid about games. Macintosh is a serious computer. What we're finding is a lot of games companies are looking at the performance of the Power Mac and the price at which people can buy it and are developing games for the Power Mac. Next up, a look at Apple's new operating system, 7.5. In the battle of the GUIs, or graphical user interfaces, window users are waiting to play with version 4.0 Chicago, but Mac users want to get their hands on system 7.5. 7.5 introduces several new ease of use features, plus it comes bundled with QuickTime 2.0. Well, Macintosh System 7.5 is actually a major step forward for the Macintosh operating system. There are a number of new features. Really, the most important one is Apple Guide. Apple Guide is a new interactive help system which actually walks a user step by step through a specific task. What's very interesting about Apple Guide is it actually replaces over 300 pages of documentation in our operating system box. In fact, WordPerfect is using the new Apple Guide as the assistance engine in its new Macintosh word processor. Apple Guide makes it easy for a software developer to create a standard help environment. Apple Guide can be easily customized and can even help with complex tasks such as network and mainframe communications. Another new feature in System 7.5 is PowerTalk, which creates a universal mailbox inside the OS so that all your incoming communications can be assembled in one place. With PowerTalk, faxes, voicemail, and multiple email boxes all appear in the same inbox making it easier to manage electronic communications. Apple is already talking about the next generation upgrade to the Macintosh operating system to be dubbed Mac OS. So how important is System 7.5? Well, actually, it's very important, I think, because it makes the Mac easier to use. I mean, there's a lot of new features. It extends the networking architecture. So you've got stuff for the power user, the brand new user, and even the medium, medium uh, level user. One thing System 7.5 does is make it easier for Mac users to work with DOS and Windows files. Built into the operating system is a file transferability, which can read any DOS or Windows file, translate it to the appropriate Macintosh application, complete with formatting commands. System 7.5 also has a new graphics architecture called QuickDraw GX. This simplifies printing and makes it easier for graphics developers to push the limits of both the 68K chip and the new PowerPC chip. As usual, the value of System 7.5 will depend on how quickly software developers move to take advantage of its new architecture. But Mac user writer Maggie Cannon says all new operating systems have the same problem, even if they come from Microsoft. Chicago is going to go through the same problem. Chicago is an entirely new operating system. It's not just an upgrade. And they're going to go through the same transitional period that 
Apple is going through in which you know they have to ramp up and get all those applications. It takes years to get thousands of applications out there. Like Chicago or Windows 95, System 7.5 wants a lot of RAM. While you can get by with 4 megs, Apple recommends at least 8 megabytes of RAM to take full advantage of its new features. System 7.5 was designed to be backward and forward compatible so that you can put it on a Mac Plus or a Power Mac. Well, actually, um, Macintosh System 7.5 really runs, and it's, it's a very important point because we're not leaving any customer behind. It actually runs all the way back to Mac Plus level CPUs. And the important part, the important message for Macintosh System 7.5 is that it's a unified release. It runs on both 68K based systems and Power Max now, based on the PowerPC processor. So it unifies the operating system and makes it much easier to manage, uh, for example, large installations of Macintoshes. And because it can run all the way back to our earliest Macintoshes, we're not leaving any customers behind in terms of the new features like Apple Guide and even QuickDraw GX. Finally, let's not forget QuickTime 2.0. The latest version of QuickTime, which comes bundled with System 7.5, is a major improvement. QuickTime 2 gives you full screen video playback without any additional hardware. The PowerBook has quickly become the cool notebook computer, and Apple, of course, would like to keep it that way. In fact, there are now high-end PowerBook 500s, mini PowerBook 200s, and the newest member of the family, the low-cost PowerBook 150. The 150 replaces the current low-end PowerBook, the 145B. Improvements include a larger screen, more expansion capability, enough pre-installed software to use the notebook right out of the box, and it still weighs in a pound lighter than its predecessor. The PowerBook 150 is not the fastest machine on the road, but it's priced at less than $1,500 and targeted for the mobile student market as well as the first-time laptop buyer. The PowerBook 280C, on the other hand, is meant for the business user. It's the industry's only 16-bit color sub-notebook, weighing in at about 4 pounds. The 280C has a hefty price tag, though, about $3,700. Though the Macintosh may not be the computer of choice in the corporate world, Apple seems to be sneaking in the back door at lots of major companies with the PowerBook. I mean, they snuck in actually over through desktop publishing, and then they've really snuck in even more so using things like uh, PowerPoint and persuasion and things that are based on uh, presentations. That's really active in the, in the um, corporate environments. The portables are clearly one of the more important platforms for them, and if you think about Apple's actual product line, you can see that the PowerBooks play a much more important role in the future. In this particular context, PowerBooks are getting accepted in the office, but again, in contrast to what's being sold by Toshiba and IBM, it's still a pretty close race. For the real power user, Apple now has the PowerBook 500 series. These notebooks feature the Motorola 68LC040 processor running at 66 megahertz. The 500 features a 9.5 inch active matrix color display and longer lasting batteries. Apple has also replaced the standard trackball with a built in track pad, which increases reliability because there are no moving parts. Stereo sound and a video out are standard for the 500, making it a great machine for those splashy corporate presentations on the road. In ads for the PowerBook, you often see people using it out in the woods somewhere or by a stream. But how long can you keep a PowerBook running with its standard battery? Not long. But a company called KISS, for Keep It Simple Systems, has introduced a solar battery for the PowerBook that will keep it running indefinitely. The panel weighs about two pounds and costs about $200. If you really want to be mobile, you want a Newton PDA. But then again, maybe you don't. I didn't bring it with me to the show. And, uh, you know, I've got my phone, but I didn't bring my Newton. And uh, uh, basically, I think Apple's done a really bad job of uh, introducing and supporting that technology. There's just no way around it. I mean, they can sit there and, and beef about whatever they want to do, but they've just done a really bad job of it. And, and it's unfortunate, because I think there's real value there, but, it, but it's very, very difficult to get access to that value. Analyst Tim Baharan had a more optimistic view. Well, Newton now's a year old. And you got to look at the whole concept of PDAs as being in the Model T stage. You know, it, we're at a point where, where, from a practical standpoint, PDAs were defined by John Scully. They were really overblown at that point. 
And now we're coming back to reality that says, okay, it's a neat concept, now let's start building it the way people really want it. And so while PDAs are in their infancy stage, many of us as analysts believe that it's still a viable category and eventually it will take off. Among the new Newton applications is this Zagat survey of top U.S. hotels and restaurants. If you have an unexpected layover in a strange city, you can use your Newton to find a place to eat and sleep. Or if you're farther afield, there's the Berlitz five-language interpreter for the Newton. Spanish, Italian, German, French, and English phrases are in your palm top for about $120. And if you'd like to carry a spreadsheet with you, Apple's own StarCore division has introduced Equate, a spreadsheet program for the Newton that takes advantage of standard Newton gestures like scrubbing and double tapping. Equate will let you import and export files to Excel. And if you want a PDA for on-location data collection, Software Technologies introduced PenEase. You build your database forms on your desktop machine and then transfer them to a Newton for data entry in the field. Coming up next, Multimedia on the Mac. The Macintosh has always owned the multimedia market, and it doesn't look like that's about to change. In fact, the newest multimedia Mac is the Model 630. It comes bundled with a CD-ROM drive, has three expansion slots, and a space for a television tuner. Whether you just want to watch TV while you work, or you want to edit videos on your Mac, the new 630 systems are meant for today's multimedia environment. The 630s include the Performa, the Mac LC, and the Quadra. The LC line really is our education line, focus at K-12, and that's the only place that you'll see the LC line. When we talk about Performa, that's our consumer line. Everything you need is in one box, and you, you'll find that model where you expect to find consumer products. Circuit City, uh, Walmart, uh, the superstores, and of course, Quadra is a great entry business. I mean, Quadra has always meant performance for business, and we've really optimized that for our corporate users and small medium business. The new Macintosh 630 features superior audio and video capability, better than a PC, and better than a Power Mac. The AV technology that Apple provides um, with their AV machines that will eventually be um, standard on the Power Mac machines is, I mean, is, is fairly painful on the PC side of the business. You have to put in sound cards, and it's just not easy, and Apple is just right there and set up and you can go. Despite the power inside the Macintosh 630, it's aimed at first-time users. And our research shows that perhaps the number one reason why families and first-time users are going to be buying a new computer is for multimedia. And what we've done with the whole 630 line of computers is we've absolutely re-architected our uh, 040 architecture and brought some of the high-end multimedia capabilities like cut-and-paste video, integrated TV, and we really optimized them for the first-time user in terms of affordability, cost, but most importantly, it just works. The basic 630 model sells for under $1,300. In addition to Apple, there were other companies showing off multimedia products. If you're serious about desktop publishing work, Radius introduced Photo Engine to put into your Mac. Photo Engine uses four digital signal processors to accelerate the often time consuming tasks in Adobe Photoshop. The new bus card and software cost about $1,100. Sharp demonstrated a new 600 dpi color flatbed scanner. The JX330 captures the tail in either color or monochrome mode. It's expected to sell for about $1,500. If you're a professional and you have to deliver your finished work to a customer, Foresight has a unique solution. This is the Superhighway ISDN Manager. It offers high-speed point-to-point file transfer of images for newspapers and magazines. Complex photos can be transmitted in just a few minutes. Hewlett Packard demonstrated two new inkjet printers for the home or small office. The DeskWriter 520 is a monochrome printer that sells for about $350. The Color DeskWriter 560C will cost you about $700. Both HP inkjet printers offer 600 by 300 DPI printing at up to three pages per minute. If you do color on the 560C, it takes about four minutes per page. And Wacom demonstrated a new smaller and less expensive graphics tablet. The ArtPad is only four inches by five inches and sells for under $200. The low-cost graphics pad comes with Wacom's UltraPen, the same one used with its more expensive tablet. The UltraPen is cordless and doesn't require a battery. 
In addition to multimedia, communications tools were big at this Mac world. Visioneer introduced Paper Macs and MaxMate for the Macintosh. It's a combination hardware-software product that lets you scan papers into your Mac and then email or fax them to another location. Buying Paper Macs will allow you to, one, we, we believe, eliminate the need to buy a fax machine. Two, it will allow you to, if you're using email and maybe connecting to the home office, uh, you're going to be able to take paper documents and now use electronic mail as a way to transport them. So if you have, say, sales invoices that you want to send back to corporate, you can send them and know that people read them. A company called Desktop Paging Software introduced UPage, a product that lets you use your Mac as an outgoing pager. With UPage, you can send alphanumeric messages of any length to a pocket pager. If the message is too long for the receiving pager, UPage automatically breaks it down into separate smaller messages. If you want to use your computer to learn a foreign language, Hyperglot was demonstrating its new CD-ROM software, which includes QuickTime movies of native speakers. Très bien. Je suis la gardienne, Madame Bertrand. And Softlink was showing off its new multilingual, multidirectional translation software. It's essentially a database that can translate between any two of the program's languages, including French, German, Italian, Spanish, Dutch, British English, and American English. Finally, there were online products for Mac owners. CompuServe was showing off its new information manager software, version 2.4. The menus are all new. And Ventana was offering an easy way to get on the Internet, a graphical user interface, two guidebooks, and an Internet membership account all in one bundle. Coming up next, games and weird stuff for your Mac. Sure, there were word processors, spreadsheets, and databases here at Boston's Macworld Expo, but there was also lots of fun stuff, like a new game called Eat My Photons. It's a 3D space combat simulation game from Eccentric Software. Cassidy and Green introduced a fascinating Macintosh game called Glider. Your mission is to fly a paper airplane through the many rooms of a house using only the airflow from the heating system. The game's developer is John Calhoun. The, I, I use it sort of as a metaphor in this game, uh, spring, bright colors, oranges, yellows, um, outdoors, not claustrophobic. Um, Art Nouveau, Maxfield Parish, turn of the century, Little Nemo and Slumberland. So there's a lot of childhood fantasy, you know, flowers and, and you know, that kind of, uh, that, that, that was sort of the metaphor in that. And then once you have sort of a theme or a metaphor for a game like that, everything follows, you know, in the development process. If you're into music, Opcode announced a new professional music notation package called Overture that lets you edit MIDI data graphically and features full MIDI playback capabilities. Opcode also introduced a Mac version of its popular children's educational title, Ally's Playhouse, on CD-ROM. If you have a hobby other than computers, there was some neat stuff for you. Books on Disc demonstrated its new version of the Digital Gourmet. It's an electronic cookbook that lets you search for recipes containing or not containing specific ingredients. The program shows you color pictures of the finished meal and includes nutritional information. If you want to hook up a wood carving machine to your Macintosh, check out Max Motion from Salustan. This is desktop woodworking, I guess. The software links the saw directly to your Mac and lets you transfer paint program designs to wood. One of the weirdest applications at Macworld was something from IBVA Technologies called the Brainwave Controller. Yeah, there's this thing called IBVA, which is a headset that you put on your head and it tracks your, your brain waves. And it's used as, a, uh, I think, a developmental uh, unit so that you can work on being concentrated on your stuff, but you can also play games with it and it, just through your thought process you can speed things up and move right or left. It's, it's fascinating. Finally, we found a backup product that had nothing to do with data storage. This is the Nada backup. Put it on and feel the difference in your lower back. Not a bad idea if you spend a lot of time in front of your computer. That's Boston Macworld 94. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffee.